welcome to the first ever Sarah Scoop Facebook Live show. My first guest is Olivia from The Bachelor. And Olivia, thank you. We're always going to remember this show. So it's wonderful that we get to have you here with us. The inaugural episode is very exciting for me. Yeah, this is great. So the last time we talked to you, because we had interviewed you in the past in a written interview, which I'll link and people can read up on. But we asked you about your life and you were living in New York City and now you're in Nashville. So what brought you to Nashville? Um, I'm honestly just kind of a gypsy. Um, I was sick of living in New York. It just like occurred to me over a week that um, I wasn't that happy there. And so I kind of, my first job, it's a piece of hair in my face. Um, my first job was in Tennessee and I, I fell in love with Tennessee way back when. And then it just kind of happened to where um, a house was on the market that I loved. And so I, I bought it and now I live in Nashville and I literally moved away from New York in like a week. It was so random. And all of my roommates were like, wait, what? Um, oh, it's kind of like one day you're like, okay. Yeah, I'm like, I'm so impulsive and I really am such a gypsy that like, if I put my mind to something, it's done the next day. So I decided I wanted to move and I was gone in like five minutes. It was ridiculous, but I love it here. <laughs> and so when you're in Nashville now, are you just doing the podcast or what do you, what do you well, do? Yeah. The, the cool thing was a job for, um, for my dream airline opened up Delta airlines. Um, and so I work for Delta um in the summers at the nashville airport i check bags so if anyone is flying through nashville i'll probably check your bags this summer um and that's for three months and then for the rest of the year i'm just traveling a ton because i love to travel so i also like interview people um while i'm on the road or i follow around my best friend brandy cyrus and uh, we're always following each other. So I, I kind of live a weird life right now. My schedule is crazy. <laughs> I was listening to your podcast with her. It sounds like you guys have a fun relationship and some travel memories. We're best friends. Like maybe should just consider getting married to, you know, us two and like just living our travel life together. It's very weird. Yeah. And in your, in your podcast, you said you guys met because you were doing a bachelor like after show. Was that correct? We were doing, um, I don't know if you've ever seen People Magazine. They do like a, a Facebook show or a YouTube show or whatever, kind of like this. And I, at the, in New York, I, me and Kayla from my season would do it all the time. And one time they called in Brandy on Skype. And I was like, wow, I feel like Brandy would be really cool. So I awkwardly asked for her email. And now we watch The Bachelor together and we sometimes talk about The Bachelor. It's fun. <laughs> So whenever it comes to The Bachelor, like obviously you're watching this season and you have written on people's posts, I saw like on Crystal, kind of like, I get it, I can relate. What I for that. Ugh. <laughs> I, I saw that, but I, I like the support. I think it's nice of, that you're putting it out there, like you've been through it. Like what it's kind of, what kind of advice do you give to people like that? I mean, for it's funny, watching Ari's season has almost been weird for me because I feel like they took so many plays out of my playbook and they're just running it again. Like everyone's saying, you look just like Chelsea, but you act like Crystal, whatever, whatever. Um, and I see so many similarities with especially Crystal's edit. Um, and, and I obviously can't get way into it, but a lot of things that she was probably pressured to do that is really um helping this edit that she's getting and uh a lot you know obviously you look at her social media and people are saying horrible things about her and i remember those days my message to her was more about handling social media than it was about anything else um you can't look you can't respond you can't you, it'll be okay it's gonna suck for a couple months but It'll pass. This too shall pass is what I was trying to say. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so as so we're doing, doing this, people are asking Oh, cool. So, so Maddie is asking, Olivia, who's your favorite from this season with Ari? Oh, uh, um, I'm having trouble picking a favorite. Um, I did like Bibiana a lot. Um, I liked her kind of passion and, uh, but I also think she hurt herself a lot. She shouldn't have brought up all the drama. Um, she got too in her head. 
Um, but I did like her a lot. I would say she was probably my favorite. But yeah, I have yet to really connect with anyone from Ari's season. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I don't like him that much. No. <laughs> do you have, okay, so someone asked, maybe they're not your favorite, but do you have anyone on here that you would be friends with? Abby asked that question. Oh, um, I've kind of connected a little bit with Annalise, the girl who ironically was like the car accident or the dog accident. Okay, she, the editing on that. That was hilarious editing. Um, she seems pretty cool. Um, I actually feel like I would be pretty good friends with Becca, the, sh the short haired girl. She mm -hmm. seems like she's got this don't care in the world kind of attitude. I also would really love, we haven't seen enough of her, but CN is amazing. And she is way too good for this show. So I don't know what she's doing here. But. <laughs> do you think that you would ever do any more Bachelor shows? Like, could you see yourself on Paradise? Or I know that the Winter Games, I, I, I apologize. I'm not, I don't think that much is told about that yet. But yeah, I, um, I've been asked to do Paradise twice. And every single time, I just cannot get behind it. And I don't know if it's because I just don't trust the show anymore or just because I don't want to be in a swimsuit on television. It's probably more of that, honestly. I do not want to be in a swimsuit. So honestly, Winter Games seemed like a better option for me just because it seems like you'll get to wear a parka the whole time or whatever. <laughs> um, but I don't know if that's going to just be like a one season Olympics thing or if it's going to be more of like a continued show. But um I would love to do TV again. I just don't know if like the dating concept is for me. You know what I mean? Like right. I would love a style show. I've always said I would love to be on that show, Worst Cooks in America. I would love that. You should do that. I think I saw their casting. Now's your time. They have a celebrity edition and they've had people from like Jersey Shore. So why not bring a batch? Chris Souls was on it, I think, which like awkward, but yeah, no, like I would do a lifestyle show. Yeah, okay. so um, would you do that in Nashville? Like maybe you and Brandy can do well, that. Actually, funny because uh, Andy Cohen, you know, Bravo man, mm -hmm. he just did an interview saying his dream city to add to the Real Housewives would be Real Housewives of Nashville. So I immediately called Brandy and I was like, we need to get married or get divorced or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I listened um, to your other one. Like, you talk a lot about your dating life. Do you have, uh, like, some good stories that you haven't gotten to share yet? You know, I I try to respect everyone that, like, sucks, you know? Like, they, a lot of the guys I've dated deserve to be called out. But um, I did a podcast with Patty Stanger recently, and I was pretty obvious talking about someone and I don't even know if he listens to the podcast but I've had some pretty crappy dating experiences in Nashville I'm actually dating um, someone now that but I the problem is like I can't get excited about anyone I mean it's it's very new like I, I I'm such a cynic when it comes to dating that I'm just like until they prove me that the, to me that they're great I just assume that it's gonna like implode you know <laughs> yeah well now that Ben's single again is that ever gonna be a thing oh, this is bad well Brandy is good friends with Ben and um, she's always wanting us to talk and be friends so actually we were in New York together last week and Ben FaceTimed Brandy and here I am in my bed we have not spoken I have not spoken to Ben I have not even like followed him and um, so we, we saw each other. He uh, he said hello. He smiled. He wasn't like, ah. So we have spoken, and, and Brandy is going on a mission trip with Ben in the next couple months, and they really want me to go. But I don't know. That, that would be like the, the world would explode if they saw pictures of me and Ben on a trip together. It would just be a lot. So I don't know. But it would make Brandy's life if we were friends. Yeah. And you, you can keep people talking, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, it's, can you imagine Ben Higgins ends up with the villain that he left on an island? That would be absolutely hilarious. But I yeah, think we, once people have started, like, seeing you after the show and listening to you on your podcast, like, I don't think you have that villain title. Yeah, you know, I, I still sometimes proclaim myself the villain, you know, but just because I think it's funny and so yeah. stupid. You know, but um, yeah, so maybe I'll go on vacation with Ben and Brandy pretty soon. I don't know. Oh, that'll be good. There you go. Um, <laughs> someone asked, 
if you would ever do a show like Survivor or Big Brother? Colleen asked that. I don't know if I could do Survivor just because I'm really not much of a survivalist. Actually, one of my best friends was on a similar show. He was on this show called Stranded on MTV and he won. He was stranded on this island for like 40 days. And I was oh thinking, God. I could never do that. So I wouldn't do Survivor, I think, but I would love to do Big Brother. That's the one where you're stuck in a house. That sounds yeah. great. Um, yeah. Or in, um, what's uh, Amazing Race I would do, because it's a little bit more like, and a, a bunch of Bachelor people are all of a sudden going on MTV. I saw doing, that, like the challenges. Yeah, I, I've, they've come to me and, and talked to me a couple times, but I'm always like, I don't know. Like, I can't see myself running 80 miles with 10 pounds of weight on me. Like, that. just, that's not my state. No, no. Yeah. So okay. we'll see. So actually, this is from my mom, which I kind yeah. of, yeah, she's tuning in. She wants to know, when you were on The Bachelor, how was it, honestly, when you saw all those girls kissing the guy? <laughs> You know what's so strange is you get you get so used to it like it's 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 the weirdest thing i would see ben making out with becca and then jojo and then whatever and it is so weird that you don't care you're like oh okay we're all doing it and then we would actually make jokes there was one point becca and jojo were best friends on my season and there was a point where becca and jojo were both sick and they made jokes like, haha, it's because we're making out with the same guy and sharing saliva. <laughs> and at the end of the night, Ben's lips would be so many different colors of lipstick because he had just, and you didn't even care. It was the weirdest thing. It was like so in real life, you'd be like, what? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my God. I'd be like, wait, why are you make? but it's like you're, you're, it's a social experiment and you're just trained to like not care. And so you see him holding hands with someone, you know that he was just making out with this girl and you're just like, no, oh, whatever. It's so weird. But no, it, it was not weird. It was actually like the easiest part of the show was realizing that he's also dating and making out with 30 other people. Oh, interesting. <laughs> um, okay, so I know that you said you weren't really into like Bachelor in Paradise, that kind of thing, but would you ever, from Maddie, be the Bachelorette? Brandy is dying for me to be the bachelorette. Um, you should do it. I, I, That'd be the best case scenario. Well, I, I feel like they'd have to put me on a show and redeem me and then make me the bachelorette, if that makes any sense. Um, but I, I would do it. I would bring like a totally different vibe than I think what anyone has ever brought. Like I would be more of a Nick, like kind of a polarizing person. You like her or you don't. But I, I would love to watch someone like me as The Bachelorette, whether it's me or someone else. Um, I would just have a hard time um, looking at a guy I don't like and pretending that I like him. Because I'm like very, you can read what I'm thinking on my face, you know? I'd be like, ugh. But also maybe something we would, it would be refreshing to see. I don't know. Um, with the, the Bachelor life and all of that. Are you following this season then? I know you said like some of the girls yeah. you've reached out to, but are you like, are you like the type that like makes a bracket and is like uh, die hard, like following the season? No, I'm not a bracket maker. Um, I, I watch, well, I live tweet a lot is what I do. Um, I didn't la on Monday cause I was on a date, but um, oh. I, I know, but I, I usually live tweet the show, but honestly that becomes such a, it's almost like a business for me that I, I barely, I don't watch it for entertainment anymore. I just watch it to, you know, but um, I, I'm just not feeling this season, but I knew I wasn't going to feel it because I just didn't feel a connection to Ari. And, and I, half the time I feel like um, it's like a really old guy making out with like super young girls. It just. Maybe. Well, like the drama of, um, what is it, Becca's age? But like, I don't know if you feel this, but when I see them making out, I feel like it's a dad and a daughter making out. And it's just too weird for me. And maybe, I, he's not, I've, I've dated men his age, but I think it's because he's so gray that it just seems like he's so much older, you know? So it's, it's very, kind of creepy to me. And like the kissing, his style is not my type. Like, you like sensual. So I end up having to close my eyes and I have to close my eyes the entire time because he's just making out the entire time. So that's my the thoughts. The kissing on bandit, that. right? The kissing bandit is, is, yeah, it's a mess for me, but whatever. We can just get through this season.
Yeah. Uh, so when you are dating in like real life now, is that kind of like, do people know you from The Bachelor? Honestly, like, um, it's not as much people know me going on a date with me, but you know, it, it, it does get weird when people ask, you know, what, what, what's your job like? What's your life like? Where did you, and then it becomes like, I have to tell this part of my life or they, they say, what's your Instagram? And then they say, why do you have 200,000 followers? Who are you? So it is, um, it is a little strange. The guy that I'm, I'm seeing now I've known for 10 years long before I did the show. So that's always, it's nice. He gets it. He knows, he knows who I was before the show. Um, but I, it's definitely something I always think about. Like, is he too interested in that life? And obviously right. like, I would love to date someone, end up with someone who doesn't even care about social media, doesn't even care about the show. That would be so ideal for me. Um, so going off that, Stacy over here, she was asking, what is your next career move? Next career move. Um, I mean, my, my, my podcast is, um, is doing amazing and it's not necessarily, I don't think I would make a career change, but, um, my resolution, um, was to become number one on CBS. My podcast is number two and we are so close to number one. And so I'm really just like pushing for everyone to like tell their friends about the podcast. And, and, and once I hit number one, like we're freaking taking over, it's going to be <laughs> So, so that's my, my plan. I would also love, um, with my travels and, and, and traveling all the time, I'd love to kind of break into like, not necessarily travel blogging because I, I can't trust myself to start a blog. Like I would never update it. Um, but I'd love to just share more travels, go, go out, um, a lot more and, and just like show the world to my followers, if you will. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, is there anyone you really want to get on your podcast that you haven't mm -hmm. talked to yet? Um, I, I'm dying to, I, me and Snooki have been going back and forth. Oh, I, that would be great. Jersey Shore is coming back. We've been going back and forth, but I'm really, really trying to get Snooks. I've been trying to get Jojo where our schedules haven't lined up, but I freaking love Jojo and I would love to have her on. And then I have all obviously those lofty people that, you know, if they even answered me, it would make my life. But um, I still really want to get, sorry, I'm getting emails. I would love to get Cameron Diaz, my twin. She would just make my world. She would rock it. So she, if you're listening, Cameron, come on my pod. <laughs> we'll get her on there for you. Um, right. Let's say about that. Um, sorry, I'm seeing what else we have over here for some no. questions. Um, someone's wondering if you wanted Wells to be the next Bachelor. No. No? <laughs> um, would you ever be... People are just saying, hi, Olivia. Hey, guys. I'm so um, glad to be here. You've kind of already answered about your thoughts on Ari being the Bachelor. Yeah. Um, Darcy is saying that you commented earlier about being adventurous. So oh, their family is from God. North Carolina in three to four weeks. So that was earlier when you were talking about how you move so quickly. What other, have you done any other crazy adventurous things that will inspire people to just like take a um, leap of faith? I, I, moving to New York was a leap of faith after the bachelor. When I was like, what am I going to do with my life? I moved to New York and it was amazing. It was the most amazing place to live for two years, but I just, it's not my personality to be there. Moving to Nashville. I, I think people oftentimes are nervous to, to step out of their comfort zone a little bit and just take a leap of faith and you know, how am I going to make friends and, and stuff? But every time I move somewhere, it is not it's so fun to meet new people and get out and explore. And I really am getting into like this adventure. The, the guy I'm seeing, um, he wants, he's traveling and said, meet me in New Zealand on this day. And I think I'm going to go because I love it. yeah, but he said, let's go on a, on a second date in New Zealand. And I was like, Oh my God. So yeah. So that's fun. <laughs> that's hilarious. Like that's great. Just like second date, New Zealand. Yeah. Um, would you ever move out west or are you pretty content with Nashville? Yeah, I'm not a Cali person. Um, I wouldn't do California. I, I love Seattle. I would love to go to Seattle, Portland. Um, but yeah, I'm not an LA person. Everyone says with my job, you got to move to LA, but I, I'm just not, 
I'm not a beach girl. I'm not like a warm weather girl. I like kind of, yeah. So I don't know if West for me. If I would, it would be like Seattle, I think. I've heard that's um, amazing. Some people were tweeting too. So I have some more of their questions that I wanted to ask, but they were asking if you had any moments, which I thought was kind of interesting. Like, were you just like cringed watching the show when you were on? Like, I think, I don't remember this, but they said there was something they filmed about cankles. Oh, oh that's like, if that was one of your cringy it, moments. It was cringy to watch that because I was so upset at how it went in real life and how they aired it. Uh -huh. um, that, that the whole story was I I um, was obese growing up and I've lost 150 pounds but um, but the thing I still hate about myself is my legs and I talked about on the show that with producers so I'm not sure if they told Ben to say this to make me happy but he uh, one day pulled me aside um, all of my first dates where I had to wear like spandex or like really short shorts and I was really self conscious because everyone is amazing and beautiful and I just hate my body and Ben said I really love your legs and that really meant a lot to me and so I decided on that day that when he got to the rose ceremony that I was going to tell him how much it meant to me that he complimented the one thing about myself that I hate the most um, and of course like when we when we were talking he was so into it and we were so in tune with each other and I got the rose like second but when the show aired it just made it look like I was talking about myself and then they edited it for me to get the rose last. So that's what was cringy was how upset I was that my favorite moment from the show got so twisted and destroyed to make me look like a psychopath. And obviously like at the time I couldn't tell that story because I was contractually said that like you can't talk about editing yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah, so that was that was sucky for me because that was like my moment of being raw and it it got and twisted. the way it came around. Yeah, so I, I didn't know if that was a cringe moment or what they it were doing I mean, exactly. Most people would think that the, the jumping out of the cake and dancing was my cringeworthy moment, but I actually loved that. My mom was so proud of me and like that was that was an Olivia moment, truly. So that was not cringy for me. It was yeah. the, it was stuff that were where I was really trying to be earnest and raw. And I forgot that when you're on a TV show, you probably shouldn't talk about all of your demons and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, so so that was what was hard for me to watch. Um, with that, with your mom, you mentioned your mom. I feel like in the interview we did with you before, you talked about like, wasn't it your mom and maybe like your sister or friend that kind of yeah. made a tape that put you on the show in the first place? Yeah, my mom and sister made the tape and sent it behind my back. I had no idea that they were they were doing it. And um, I got a call and I was like, oh my God, what is going on? I called my mom and I said, what did you do? And um, I was such a late last minute addition. I mean, I had a week to, to oh, figure wow. out. So, so yeah, I was way last minute. I probably would have never done it had, uh, you know, I had more time to think about it. But yes, my mom was a detrimental force in getting me on the show. And it's not that she regrets it, but she definitely feels a little bit of remorse just based on um, how it went for me and how much emotional stress it put me under. She felt really bad because she thought it was going to be this amazing experience and I was going to look so good. And But yeah, she was big. She really wanted me on that show. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that's interesting because a lot of people just see like, oh, there's girls coming out of the limo, but they don't think about like, there's a process on how they get there and that sort of everyone, thing. Everyone is different. I, I talk to people, people ask me all the time, I'm going to castings, what's your advice? And I'm like, I didn't have a normal casting experience. So I don't really know as far as how to get on the show. I have no idea. I don't even know how I got on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked out. I mean, look where you are now. You've got, I like how you go with your you play off of things like you're mouthing off. You're like, yeah, the, I have to make fun of myself somehow, right? Yeah. It, took, it took me two years to figure out how to make fun of the mouth, but I finally figured out the right avenue to capitalize on the mouth thing. So, <laughs> well, I love the podcast. Like, I'm addicted to it. So, it's probably going to go up number one just from me, like, re listening. I hope so. I work so hard and I've got stiff competition at number one, but um, we're very close. And it's that, it's that feeling of like you want it just you want to be there and once I'm there it'll I just can't wait we're close it'll happen I know
Um, there's people that are commenting. Danny says that, so they appreciate like how real you are. Like it's fascinating about the editing part. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, the people, I think the reason I, I so passionately talk, you know, when I comment on these women's cap, uh, pages saying you're going to be okay. Like people don't know the half of what is presented to them. And obviously the things that come out of our mouths are we say yes, but like they don't understand that when we're in these ITMs, which are these private interviews, you know, the producers are getting what they want out of us. You have to you have to answer in complete sentences so that they can chop it up and move it around. And and, you know, they'll say your your connection with Ben is so good. Right. And then you say, yes, my connection with Ben is great. And then you look like a crazy person. So, you know. It's just interesting to think about. There's a lot that goes into it that people don't know. Right. Um, what is, so, I mean, I kind of like this question too, because I feel like you've like done it all now. Like you are, how old are you? 25, 26? Not to turn 26. 26. You have like your own business. You've been like on national <laughs> TV. You've lived like some of the coolest <laughs> states. Um, so Darcy wants to know what's the one thing you really want to do that you haven't done yet? Um, well, I, I just recently went bungee jumping, and uh, that was amazing. But I, I'm dying to go skydiving, <laughs> like dying to. Sorry for that text. Um, and then I, it sounds stupid, but I, I would love to fall in love. It has been um, five years now since I've even had someone considerable in my life to even call a boyfriend or anything. And um, I feel like I'm like drying up, like I'm like a wet, like, the, oh, I'm running out of water. So yeah, it sounds stupid, but I haven't done love in a very long time. And I would love, I'm at the point in my life where I feel like I've done so many things and, and I just want the person. So I know that's stupid. Like, you know, that's not but, stupid at all. I think that's great. And like that you're putting it out there. That means it's going to come, I'm, right? Put it in the universe that I am the one thing I haven't done since college was be in love and love someone else um so yeah that's what I would say with your <laughs> journalist journalism background like I'm just curious would you ever write a book like is oh, that something God. you've ever thought of like I have been asked that so many times um I I I would love to write a book if it wasn't so like taboo to write a book right you know like um there's so many bachelor girls who who want to come out with books are writing books and i just don't want to do what everyone else is thinking about doing um but like that was my literal dream in like elementary middle school was to be an author um so maybe i don't know i feel like i kind of missed my boat to write about bachelor stuff but maybe i could just write about i don't know other things i have no idea <laughs> yeah no i i don't know i just think it's interesting like i'm no expert, I'm no expert. No, but you're real, and that's what we like about it. Um, yeah. Okay, well, we can kind of close things up. I will, I will share that they've said Olivia for oh. Bachelorette. <laughs> Maddie votes that, and there was a few more comments that I missed, but they were saying... Brandy's dream is for me to be the Bachelorette, and I do not get it, but regardless, she wants it. I think it's great. I mean, you know, give it a try. She could be... You guys could do your own little YouTube show. Okay. She could be the Chris Harrison... Oh. Like, if you can bring back Ari, you can bring back me, okay? I'm not that much in the past. <laughs> there we go. Um, well, is there anything you want to say to people that are watching that maybe watched you on your journey and, like, um, anything? Thanks for, thanks for accepting me for the weirdness that I am. I love you all. Um, if you listen to the to Mouthing Off, thank you. Um, if, if you don't, you should check it out. Um, you should tell your friends to subscribe because mouthing off is fun and I have a big year ahead and um, let's make it number one. I Do you have any guests coming up that you can tell us about that people can tune in for? Yeah, well, I, I have some of the Real Housewives of New Jersey on. Um, I don't know if you guys, I love Bravo. Um, Summer House is starting and I have Steven coming on and, and uh, Carl and um, yeah, I'm really working on Snooki. I'm like pushing for this. Yeah, stuff. you guys so, can be like the meatballs, isn't the that? <laughs> the twins are coming on pretty soon, which is going to be crazy because, and I maybe Ben Higgins too. So yeah, you guys can come live from your vacation oh together. Oh my gosh, <laughs> when we're dating. Oh, it's 
Ben Higgins will be coming on the show and it's going to get weird, probably very weird. But. We'll make sure to all tune in for that. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, thank you so much, Olivia. I appreciate it. And I'll make sure to share this on YouTube as well because I know there's probably a lot of people that want to see it that couldn't tune in, but we had some good questions. Oh, here, I'll leave you with this one. I love your podcast so much from Abby. So there are people out there listening that love your podcast. Abs, you rock. Love ya. <laughs> Thanks so much, Olivia. Bye. Bye.